we arrived um, a couple of days ago in the morning and after our night train and even though it was kind of cold and gray um, as soon as we like got more into the city we really felt um, invited yeah. or at peace at peace especially because there's um this museum park right next to our accommodation which yeah it was really green and we thought we were getting into this like huge city and then there's this really nice park just next to us which yeah we really liked uh -huh. There were a lot of other people. You definitely had your own space, but um, the other people also really um, seemed at peace as well, mm -hmm. which, which seemed nice. Yeah, they appreciated the green space. It seemed like they really appreciated it. Yeah. I was asked to come here to this parking lot to help compost for Food Not Bombs. And Food Not Bombs is an organization that takes food and cooks it on the weekend, every weekend, and gives it to the homeless or to the needy. And they had a lot of waste and they asked, they wanted to compost it instead of throwing it in the trash bins. So everything we've grown here, they have come from trash bags. This is completely private property and not funded at all. So all we have is volunteers. The people involved, the Aurora, they're an office building with a lot of NGOs inside. They said they couldn't use the place as a, as a beer garden. So they said, well, let's just make it green and nice. And we don't, they're all artists in there. They don't need, they don't have cars. They all have bikes <laughs> or uh, whatever. And um, we started to green it. There's this thing called a climate garden, which is a focus for us. And we could get all the people who are interested in re-greening the city, interested in more of the ecology and the biodiversity things. There must be a lot of people who don't want to farm, but they love nature. And they're all stuck in the city, and here's a place in the 8th district, in the, in the middle of downtown, in Budapest. That's why we decided to go with the, the climate forest, the climate garden model. And what that model means is that you can rebuild the soil with trees, bushes, plants in five years. And when the trees grow big enough, they make a microclimate. So it can be 40 degrees up here and it's 35 degrees underneath because the, the wind doesn't blow the moisture out of the out of the garden and it's that moisture is cooling everything and underneath there's another layer of of bushes and flowers and plants which are also transpiring water and they're keeping that moisture lower so that's 30 degrees and then we have a deep layer of mulch which covers everything the rain that hits the ground can evaporate out it all stays in the ground for as long as it can stay there and that means that the rain that hits Budapest is more than enough to keep a forest alive. We don't have to use any of the city water after five years. The first year we had, it was terrible. We had veg barely any vegetables could grow and we were watering all the time. And by the second year, we had little baby trees and I was telling all my friends, we got a forest, we got a forest. And they were like, a f they came here and said, a forest, where? And I was like, there's a tree, there's a, there's a tree everywhere, there's a tree, look, tree. And, and they were like, uh-huh, uh-huh, you know, that's nice. 
And then as they grew, you know, we have 250 square meters of space that we've dug out, which where roots can get into the, into the ground under the city. And in those 250 square meters, there's 170 trees for free. It seems to me that urban developers create areas where the trees are so far apart that they can't help each other or they're alone in these boxes, you know, like in a little box. Even if you cut a hole in the sidewalk and give the tree a space underground where its roots can be cooler, you put a small tree in there, every year that tree is going to grow and grow and those roots are going to fill that box and it's going to get more and more sick and more and more vulnerable and you're going to have to replace it. I think like around the city there's definitely adequate amount of park spaces like we always find somewhere to sit down. It's definitely the district with the most green spaces that we've visited. I think around the river it's a bit less green, green like exactly at the river on the Pesh side, I think, maybe. Yeah. When I say green infrastructure, I'm not talking about greening the, from Google Maps. I'm not talking about tree, counting treetops. I'm talking about all the ecological functions that green, that living green areas give. But it seems to me that urban developers create areas that cannot give but only take. For me, green infrastructure is not putting nature back in the city but putting the city back in nature, which is a uh, fundamentally different way of, of designing in a city. And that is dedicating areas of our, that we have fought with concrete and asphalt and machines to, to take from nature, to give that back and let nature do its thing. And when we do that, nature starts giving. I had this experience a few days ago where we were traveling around cities for like the past three weeks and then we were in a hostel where there was a garden and I could take off my shoes and walk through the grass like with naked feet and it was like it was amazing I felt like alive again so in that sense I feel like nature is much more important to me than I sometimes think and I sometimes don't appreciate it enough, I feel like. Mm.